How are you supposed to study and honor your shelf when you're spending 14 hours at the hospital? You start each rotation with the best intentions, but between unexpected cases and late rounds, those study plans keep getting pushed back. Even worse, when you do find pockets of time, a quick break turns into an hour or two of procrastination, and the guilt keeps growing. I'm going to show you the exact strategies I use at Stanford to honor all my third year shelf exams and Harvard MGH to master both clinical duties and board preparation, even during my busiest rotations. Let's dive in. Strategy number one is to maximize mental focus and to study before your shift. Unlike your preclinical years when you're going to have a lot of choices about where you study and when you study and how much you're gonna study and whether you go to class and all of these things, when you're on a rotation, you really have one major choice about your studying. And that choice is, are you going to study before you go into the hospital or after you get home? Now, if you're like me, you've probably tried studying after a long day in the hospital. The challenge with studying at the end of the day is, is that you're physically exhausted. Even if you lean more towards being a night person like I am, no matter how much you're naturally awake towards the end of the day, if you've been in the hospital retracting for hours, or you've been exhausted from presentations, or constantly checking up on labs, it's going to be a huge challenge after a long day to come home and try to get your Self to study. Contrast for me, I made the conscious decision to turn myself into an early morning person because for the same amount of time, I would have more energy to study in the early morning than I would coming home and trying to study late into the night. In addition to having more energy early in the morning, there are other reasons why studying in the morning, even if you're not a morning person, is a more effective way to study when you're on rotation. For example, having a natural deadline is a really good way to make sure that you're going to be more focused. Because I knew that I had to leave at a specific time to get to the hospital, for my rotation, studying in the morning gave me a natural deadline to aim for so that I would naturally avoid procrastination. In contrast, whenever I studied in the evening, I could always find reasons to procrastinate and, and say that I would study later. There's no natural deadline when you're studying after you come home, and because of that, your studying can be pushed back later and later and later to the point where it starts to affect your sleep and it starts to affect your focus. If you want to make yourself into an early morning person, my best advice is to make sure that you get eight hours of sleep. I know it sounds crazy to say, but I actually slept eight hours a night for pretty much every single night when I was in medical school and in residency, with very few exceptions. Getting a good night's sleep also is going to improve your focus so that you can get more done. How would you actually implement this strategy? Let's say that you have to leave your house at 5 a.m. in order to get to the hospital in time. If you want to study for two hours, you're going to have to study for two hours before your shift. And in order to do that, you might have to wake up at 3 a.m., which means if you work backwards to get eight hours of sleep, you'd have to go to sleep at 7 p.m. I get it. No one wants to go to bed at seven and wake up at three. Like that is definitely true. But the question that you should be asking yourself is, what is more difficult? Is it more difficult to go to sleep early and wake up early and study before you go into the hospital? Or is it more difficult for you to try to come home after a really long day in the hospital and try to force yourself to get more studying done? If you're like most people, you'll realize eventually that studying before you go into the hospital, even if you're a night person, is a more effective way to get more done. Strategy number two is to turn dead time into study time in the hospital. One of the general truisms of working in the hospital is that the longer you spend in the hospital, the more downtime you're going to have. This is particularly true of inpatient rotations like internal medicine, or if you're inpatient for pediatrics or OB or um, surgery. And the key is, is that you want to use that downtime effectively. You've probably tried to use this downtime to study. Now, the mistake that most people make is, is that when they're trying to study, they'll pick up their phone. The downside with using your phone when you study is that people, particularly those that are going to write your evaluations like residents and interns and attendings, are naturally going to assume that you're checking your email or on social media. You could be looking at up to date on your phone, but it's still going to look to most of the people that aren't paying close attention to you that you're just slacking off. Burnout is rampant in residents in particular, and one of the hallmarks of burnout is cynicism. And so you don't want to give them any reason, because perceptions matter, not just for evaluations, but also for good relations with your team, it's important that you don't look like you're slacking off. Generally, people's emotional reaction when someone is working on a computer, especially if it's a hospital computer, is that they will assume that you're doing hospital work. The ironic thing is, is that you could literally be like planning out your next vacation or on Instagram on a hospital computer, but as long as they're not looking at what you're actually doing, they're going to assume that you're doing real work. Or you know, it could be doing patient care things on your phone. For most people, they're going to assume that you're just wasting time. The best way to study is on a hospital computer using a web browser. What I recommend doing is using the 
web browser on a hospital computer, especially for things like Anki Web. Anki Web is basically the free companion that you can use if you use Anki. It's perfect for the small clips of time that you're going to have in the hospital since every card usually takes less than a minute or two and which makes it really well suited for the frenetic hospital environment. In contrast, if you've ever tried to use a QBank like UWorld or Amboss on a hospital computer, you may have found that it's difficult to get into the right mindset for doing questions or in studying questions that you get wrong. The reason for this is you have to really focus to do a question, and a question takes about 90 seconds on average to do. If you've got other things in the environment going on, it can be difficult to do a question and then you know have your attention focus on something else and then go back to it. And especially when you're trying to learn something afterwards, right? You're gonna be looking something up and then something is gonna come from the hospital and then you're gonna have to like go focus on that thing and then you're gonna come back and you'll waste a ton of time. Instead, Anki cards on a hospital computer are a fantastic way to use little clips of time because even if you've got two minutes, you can still effectively do cards during that time. One pro tip that you can use to make sure that your Anki studying stays under the radar is to take the browser app and resize it so that it fits within the EMR window. You can take the browser that you're studying Anki Web on, you can put it, put it within the Epic window. Then to make it even more effective, you wanna master the use of the keyboard shortcuts, particularly Alt-Tab if it's a PC. And so what Alt-Tab does is it allows for quick switching between applications. If someone's coming up and you know you, you quickly wanna to switch to you know looking at the EMR, you can very quickly just hit Alt-Tab and then it will switch to the Epic window. Strategy number three is to build trust and drive patient care while studying. We just talked about how you can study using Anki on a hospital computer while keeping it under the radar. The next step is to actually make sure that you're contributing towards positive patient care. The way to do this strategy is that you want to find reasons to be on the computer that are going to be helpful for the team and that are going to justify you being on the computer, which is also going to give you time to study when you're in the hospital. The best way to do this is on inpatient rotations when during rounds, there's gonna be items that come up that you're gonna see like the interns typically kind of scribble down on their to-do lists of things that need to be followed up. So examples of this would be labs that need follow-up. So particularly really important labs like a troponin that needs to be trended or serum creatinines, or if there's like a bleeding patient, like a CBC and the hemoglobin so that you can follow those things. Other things that are time sensitive that are common that come up or things like consult recommendations or radiology reads or things like that. Write down a list of all of those things that need to be followed up and then park yourself on the computer every 15 to 30 minutes, scan through all of the things that need to follow up. Residents and interns are really, really busy. Even if you do this every 15 to 30 minutes, you are still going to do this much, much more frequently than they will have time to. When something comes up, like like a lab comes up or uh, you know one of the consult recs comes up, you can say like, hey, Mr. Smith's troponins came back, they were negative, here, let me show you. And then like, and you just like turn your computer and show it to them. That way you can be moving patient care forward because again, these are really important things that your intern or your resident will love you. In addition to that, it's also a really good way to show that you're doing really useful work and have a good reason to be on the computer. Strategy number four is to double your study time by transforming your commute. There were times when my commute would be up to like 45 minutes minutes or even more each way. Normally, we might think of these things as wasted time. However, I learned how to switch my perspective so that I could see these as consistent guaranteed blocks of study time. You may already be trying to take advantage of your commute by using things like you know, podcasts or things like that. The way that I was able to take my studying to the next level was I started to use public transportation. Public transportation has multiple benefits. The main one being that you're not the one actually doing the driving. For example, when I was in residency, I actually chose to live on the subway even though it was, it would mean that I lived much farther away because it basically was guaranteed study time for me to do my flashcards or other reviews every single day each way. When I worked at MGH, for example, we lived in Melrose, which was the first stop in the Orange Line. Even from Melrose, it took me roughly twice as long to get to the hospital. I know that some of you are probably thinking, well, my commute takes a long time already. And if I were to use public transportation, it would take me even longer. Granted, if you have to like switch three different buses and you know take like a boat or something to get there using public transportation, yeah, maybe I wouldn't recommend doing that. You know, if you can do it with a minimum number of transfers, I would highly recommend that you consider using public transportation, even if it takes you longer. And the reason is, is that using public transportation allows you to have extra time to actually study, as opposed to like the passive listening that you might have if you're listening to like a podcast that might make you think like, oh yeah, I've heard that before, but is actually very difficult to use in a real sort of clinical scenario or on a test. If you are going to use passive ways of studying on your commute, the best way to do it is to try to pair it with something that 
that is active that can reinforce that material afterwards. So for example, in the online course, we have videos that you can listen to on the way to your commute, and underneath, you've got the text of flashcards that you can copy and paste into your deck. So you can just reinforce what it is that you're learning and take advantage of your commute to make sure that you are learning things more effectively. So strategy number five is to make sure that you never ever forget what it is that you're learning. I've referenced Anki a lot to make sure that what it is that you're learning, you never forget. This is a critical thing because there's a lot of overlap in the shelf material between different rotations. One of the best ways of doing well on the surgery shelf is to make sure that you know the internal medicine shelf material really, really well. And one of the best ways of doing well in family medicine is to make sure that you know the material for internal medicine and surgery and pediatrics and OB. Even if like you're starting out without having a lot of knowledge, if you just make sure that you don't forget what it is that you're learning and you learn it well the first time, it will make every subsequent shelf that much easier. If you want more tips on how to use Anki effectively, be sure to hit like and subscribe so that the YouTube algorithm can serve you more useful content on how to get the most out of your studying. Strategy number six is a bonus, and that's to begin with the end in mind. Specifically, what I mean is, is that all of your rotations give you the chance to build towards something greater. At a minimum, if you're on rotations, you're going to be studying for step two. For some schools, you may not have taken step one yet if you're in your first year of clerkships. And in either case, each rotation is an opportunity for you to build towards something greater. As we said previously, what you learn, make sure that you never forget. Let's say that I wanted to score really, really high in sub two. The best way to do that is to make sure that everything I learned in internal medicine, I learned really well and I never forgot it. And then I go on to surgery and I learn that really well and I never forget it. And then do pediatrics and OB and every other rotation, right? By the time that you get to the end of your rotations, you will have such a strong knowledge base and so few remaining weaknesses your dedicated studying can be focused on the things that get you really high scores, which include things like making sure that you limit the unforced errors and you can get more questions correct for the knowledge that you already have. If you're studying for step one, you can basically follow the same approach. If you want a video on this, be sure to let us know in the comments so that I know that there's interest in creating a more in-depth video on this. And for the exact framework to improve your USMLE score at any level, be sure to check out this video, how to score USMLE 260 plus, even if you're failing.